Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and in today's video, we'll be playing through a boss battle from Wander the Call to Barnacle Bay. This is the original game in the Wander series from Panacle Games. It is a one to five player game that takes roughly one to two hours to play, and is a fully cooperative dungeon crawler where all the players are working together to defeat whichever scenario they've chosen to go on. So in this particular one, I'm going to be taking on Chalka, and she is a nasty witch doctor that can summon darkness tiles onto all kinds of different spaces around the board, and then she'll hide until the heroes are able to find out which one that she's hiding under. So causing all kinds of problems for the heroes, which also as she's hiding, she'll be able to heal, and then you know enemies will be coming out at certain points from different effects and whatnot. So just all all kinds of headaches for the heroes and probably one of the more challenging boss battles in the original game. Now I did want to show you this because they do play quite differently than the regular scenarios in Wander the Cult of Barnacle Bay and it's important as Panacle is going back to Kickstarter for a brand new standalone game which is Wander the Leclux Revenge that's going to add a whole new core game to your experience where you can mix and match heroes and enemies kind of combining things and changing things around but you can also play it as a standalone so I figured this was a good opportunity to show you a boss battle and how that works in the original game. So from there, as always, if you find my videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button and subscribing to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow and be able to produce this content. If you want to get notified anytime I drop new videos, hit that notification bell and that'll let you know when I drop new stuff. I also have links on the bottom and at the end of this video, if you want to check out the new videos that I've done for LeClux Revenge, and I'll also have a, description, a link in the description to the Kickstarter page if you want to check that out as well, as they are going to be going back to Kickstarter, reprinting this core game as they are completely sold out of it, as well as a number of different add-ons, including some of the stretch goals from the original that you can pick up during this one. So if you've missed out on, on any of that, or this is the first time you're seeing Wonder, then you'll have an opportunity to get all of that stuff as well as any new stuff that they have for LeClux Revenge. So let's go ahead and head to the table and we'll see what this one's all about. All right, so before getting into the game, there's a couple of additional things I have to take care of during setup. Again, with this being a one-off mission, I get to generate my uh, different items from the decks. And so as you can see on this chart here, I'm going to draw nine level one items and six level two items to start this off. So let's start off with our level one items and see what we get. And we have Mighty Gloves, the Holy Robes, Stabby Dagger, Shrukens, Throwing Axes, Boulder Drop, Lucky Gem, the Worn Armor, and Amulet of Protection. Okay, pretty good. And then as far as level two items are concerned, we have, oh, the Flotation Device, Horned Helmet, the Whaler Bow, Eldridge Tomb, and the Urchin Armor, and some Nunchucks. All right, so let's see what we can do here with this stuff. All right. Um, hmm. Let's do Mighty Gloves on Eileen. I will do... Also going to do Amulet of Protection on her because she, she's probably the worst as far as defense is concerned. So I'll go ahead and drop that on her with that. Um, I'll go ahead and give the reroll to Talia as well as the Holy Robes, as this is going to give her a ranged attack reroll. And then I will also replace her bow with the Whaler Bow. That's pretty useful. So that'll be the first item that'll be exchanged. Um, I will give the Urchin Armor to Gumbjorn, as well as the Horned Helmet. And the flotation device. That is super helpful. All right. And then Mary fix it. I'm going to go ahead and give her the Eldritch Tome. That'll replace her item. And let's see here. What else we got here? I'm going to go ahead and give her this, which is plus one HP and defense. We still have the still have plenty of weapons. So I think I will... Replace hers with the nunchucks. That's a single-handed weapon, so I still have another hand that I could potentially equip something with. Crit causes cleave. Eh, not so great. Plus one defense reroll, attacks gain pierce. That's pretty good. Um, but we might be able to get something better with that. And I think I'm going to take a chance with Gumbjorn as well and get rid of his hammer. 
and see what we get here. So I got four cards there I can trade in. And each Every two cards I trade in, I get two item, or one item. So I'm gonna go ahead and trade these in as well. So that will give me four additional items from level two. So let's see what we get with that. So we have the fishing boots, the sacrificial dagger, a really lucky gem, and the sushi knife. Okay. Um, I will go ahead and give Gumbjorn the sushi knife. It's a two-hander. Ooh, let's see here. Um, well, let's go ahead and do the fishing boots on Mary. That'll give let her go through water. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take the sacrificial dagger with Eileen, and then I do have this. There's a HP and a reroll on all attack, defense, and knowledge checks. Hmm. So, actually, I think I will switch and give her the lucky gem, and then I will give her the luckiest gem, as that gives her an extra HP as well. And then I do get a relic, so I'm going to do this support ring. This is plus one HP, and heroes in the same space gain plus one defense. Ooh. I could give it to Eileen, or uh, Mary, as I she's kind of like my tanky character in a way. She has plus one defense there, so that gives her four. This would bump her up to five and basically give all other heroes next to her one as well. So I think I'll do that. All right, and then we have to shuffle up our initiative cards and see what our order is to start us off. All right, so top of the order is Talia. Then we have Mary with an attack slot, Gumbjorn with a movement, and Eileen coming up last. All right, I think we're ready to move in then. I don't think there's anything else to handle, so let's go ahead and start us off with Talia. So Talia is the only one that doesn't get any benefits to moving through water, but we do need to pick our, our abilities. So let's start off with Mary. I'm gonna go ahead and take the reflexive barrier. So a crit defense roll causes knockdown to one enemy with a crit, so I'll do that. Uh, Talia is going to take, I think I'll take, um, the strong shot so on a crit attack it's going to cause all heroes close to the target to gain plus one attack on the next attack roll so that could be good Eileen's going to take flight which lets her move through water spaces as there's a lot of water out there and then with Gumbjorn I'm going to take I think I'll take the fortitude and that is going to give me plus one defense and plus one HP as there's no point in taking a two-hander right now because all I have is, is one two-hander as instead of do, uh, being able to wield that one hand. All right, so Talia is going to move once and twice, and that is all she can do. So that is the end of her turn. So over to Chalk for the first one. So we have Darkness Falls. Place all revealed non-treasure darkness tiles face down. Any hero close to a darkness tile is attacked for one hit. All Any wounds cause, uh, taken causes Chalk to heal one HP per wound. So luckily, we have no darkness out yet, and so nothing else happens. And we're over to Mary to go. So Mary is going to start off by moving her first action there. And I'm going to go ahead and stop here as my second action. As stepping in front of Chalk right now isn't necessarily the best thing, as I don't really have anything else to mess with. Now she does have the reflexive barrier. But that's going to cause knockdown to one enemy per crit, and bosses cannot be knocked down. All right, uh, over to Chalk to go. So with her, she has Life Siphon. She is going to move two spaces to get a clear shot on a hero with the highest X X XP. So everybody's tied, so she's simply going to just move up one, and she's going to do two hits. And if there's any wounds, then she heals, but she hasn't taken any wounds yet. So over to Mary to get her defense. She's going to get three four, and five. And she got two. She doesn't need to really roll anymore, so no wounds for Mary. So that's cool. All right, on to Gumbjorn. So Gumbjorn is going to move one, and he'll move two. 
you might as well move right up into that space. There's no reason not to at this point. He does get a free move action, so he can actually attack as well. So might as well. So I'm going to get five dice. And then I get plus one for the horn. And he is in a movement space, so nothing else there. Actually, I'm going to stay in the water because I get a bonus while in the water with the flotation device. So I can pick up another die for that. Sweet. All right, and then I get a... I get one reroll with the sushi knife. All right, Let's see what happens here. All right, come on, Gumbjorn. So there's four hits and a crit. So I get to roll for the crit. That's another hit and the reroll. All right, the reroll doesn't help, but I do six damage. And she's going to take three away from that. And that is it. So she's going to take three damage. So Chalk's down to 27. Gumbjorn picks up three XP. And that will finish off his turn. So that was pretty, pretty successful. All right. Uh, then Chalk is going to reveal. So she has Blight Barrage. Uh, check attack. Uh, she's going to attack all heroes in clear shot. So both Mary and Gumbjorn for two hits. Then teleports to the second furthest spawn point. Place a darkness tile from where she ends up dropping. All right, so both Gumbjorn and Mary are going to take hits. So I'll go ahead and do Mary first. She's going to get her five. So we'll see what happens with that. She stops just one so far. She got the crit, so... And she does have a reroll. With that, make sure there's nothing else here. Uh, nope, just the one. Okay, so let's see what she if she can stop. Nope. All right, so she's going to take one. And then Gumbjorn gets two. Picks up, uh, he gets a reroll for that. And he gets one additional for that. So he's going to, he only gets three. Oh, he picks up, he has fortitude as well. So he has four. Correct. Five. So he gets one, two, three, four, five. Okay, we're at five. But I thought he had a little bit more than that. He has a crit, two crits, and a hit. So each crit that he gets with the urchin armor is really good. So might as well go ahead and roll two more crit or two more dice for those. And then he gets a reroll one because of the flotation. All right. So he doesn't take any damage, and he actually ends up dealing two damage to chalk for the urchin armor. All right. So she's down to 25. She also jumps away to the second furthest darkness tile. That one's definitely going to be the furthest. So then it's one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So she's going to pop over here. Okay. All right. And then he's going to pick up two XP for that. So he is in level two now, and everybody else is going to pick up one. And then every time a hero levels up, instead of spawning enemies, then you're going to resolve an additional card from the boss. So she has Curse Bomb. She's going to move one space to get into clear shot with the closest hero, if not already in clear shot. And then range attack that hero for two hits. And it's a knowledge check, but uh, nobody's in line of sight, so she'll move forward, but there's nothing else she can do as she blocked us with that darkness tile. We got lucky. <laughs> Sweet. All right. On to Eileen. Eileen gets to fly. So I'm going to... I think I'm going to play it safe. I could move over here to kind of get in position, but... I think I want to stay with the rest of our party, and I'm going to simply just move there and call it good. All right. So then it's over to Chalk. So she's going to spawn two grunts close to her. So I'll place them here, and then I have to put the grunt card out. Okay. And then she teleports to, uh, teleports to the second furthest away. So that might be this one at this point. So let's see here. She's here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
and one, two, three, four, five. So she's going to pop over here. Place the darkness tile where she previously was, so she's going to drop one here. She's just bouncing around all over the place. All right, uh, then the grunts are going to go. They simply will move forward one space. And then we're back to the top of the order with Talia. So Talia is going to go ahead and move up for one. And... I'll go ahead and jump in there. Why not? Let's see what happens. All right, so we have an event. Health potion. You discover a health potion hidden in the darkness. Add a health potion token to your dashboard. Wow, that was excellent. Very, very helpful. All right, uh, that is it for Talia. So then back over to Chalk. And we have the f Vicious Miasma. Spawn one caster in the same space as the hero with the lowest HP. Who has got the lowest HP? So we have Talia with four, five, six. Mary Fixit has four, five, six, seven. Eileen's got four, five, so it might be Eileen. Yeah, it's definitely going to be Eileen. All right, so we have a caster in there. And then Chalk heals at one HP, so she's back up to 26. Okay. Uh, and then we have to put the casters out. So caster is going to move into that slot. All right. Um, that is it for Talia. On to Mary Fix It. So Mary is actually in a space with that. So she might as well do a knowledge check and see what happens with that. All right. And that's how her book works. So with the tome. She is going to check her knowledge on a 0 to 1. She suffers knockdown. On a 2 plus, she does 2 wounds and knocks down an enemy. So I'll go ahead and knock down that guy and do 2 wounds. And then I might as well just do it again to try to finish him off. And I got 2 more, so that will take care of him as he only has 4 HP. So Caster has been eliminated. She picks up an XP, so she's up to 2 now. And that is her turn, because there's not much else, anything else I can do with her. All right, uh, Chalk has vanished. So we're going to remove Chalk from the board and shuffle one objective token, uh, one objective darkness tile with three other darkness tiles face down, and then you're going to place them on the objective markers. So there's that one, and then three. So I'll shuffle these up real quick. Right. And then each one of them goes underneath one of these. So we got to find where she is. And each round that go, ticks by that we don't, she's going to heal one. All right. So upon discovery of the objective darkness tile, you're going to spawn her onto it and resume play as normal. All no AI cards are drawn until she returns to the board. And if she is not on the board at the beginning of the initiative round, she's going to heal one. Okay. So that will be interesting to see what happens with that. All right. Um, that is it for Mary's turn. So we're on to Gunbjorn to go. So I could jump over, jump over here to see if she's there. And how that. I think I will because I have his ability. So let's go ahead and jump over here and see if she's there. She is not, and we have an event. It is a brute ambush. You are suddenly ambushed by brutes. Your turn ends. No. Place two brutes in your space, pushing you into a close space. Place the initiative card on the next spot on the track. That is horrible. What a card to pull. All right, so he's going to push them over. All right, and then they are going to jump into the next space on the track, and I lose my turn. Those mad beasts. All right, and they're going to pick up an extra defense as well as they're in a defensive slot so that's not good all right so then my turn's over they go next they're going to each attack me for two so that's four damage coming my way i get two defense for that one for the armor i do get a defensive reroll for this and then i got i am not in a defensive slot there but i do have one for that and then with that one, heroes in the same space gain the defense. So I'm not in the same space. So I got four damage coming my way. 
with four here. So crits would be great here. All right, so there's one and a crit. So I do get to roll another die for that. And I do get to reroll one. And no. so I take one wound. So all things considered, that's not too bad. The urchin armor, I do a wound per crit. So I'll wound one on that. So that's good. And that is it. So that is the brute's turn. And then we're on to Eileen to go. So Eileen now. Hmm. Eileen is going to move for her first and try to attack the grunts as they're going to be the next ones to go. And I'm going to use the nunchucks. So that's going to give me four dice. I get an additional one for the gloves. And I am in an attack slot, so I'll pick up one for that as well. The nunchucks are going to give me two rerolls, but if I don't do any hits, or if I don't roll any hits, then I suffer a wound. So let's hope for the not getting that. That was pretty close. All right, and I do get the two rerolls from that. All right, so five damage, or five hits. Grunts have two defense, so they're going to take three. And that is it, as I have my two actions. So that is that is all I can do. All right, uh, on to the grunts to go. So the grunts are going to come back and attack Talia for two damage. Talia gets two defense, plus one for her space. And that is it. So she's going to get three. She stops both of them. So not too bad. I'll take it. All right, we're up at the top of the order. That will also heal Chalk by one, so you're back up to 27. And Talia to go. So Talia is going to go ahead and take a shot on, on one of those grunts there. That's all she can target. So she's going to get five dice for that. And this could be interesting. Okay, so... Ooh, nice. So five hits. She does have rerolls, but I think I'm going to settle for that. I'll attack the one that's wounded. Um, she has pierce, so four damage on that guy. And she did not roll any crits, so she doesn't get to give uh, Eileen an extra attack die yet. But maybe on this next one. All right. So that'll get her an XP. And let's go ahead and go after the other guy here. All right, so there's four hits, no crits yet. And then I do have uh, one reroll there, one reroll there, one reroll there. So three rerolls if I need it. So there's one, two, and three. I did need all three, and all three didn't help me. So three damage onto that grunt there. Again, no crits. Okay, that is it for Talia. And so it's over to Mary to go. So Mary. Mary's next. What do we want to do with Mary? Mary's got the tome. So I'm going to go ahead and target this guy back here for one. And I got it. So I'm going to knock him down and do two wounds to him. And tempted to take out that that grunt there. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to try it for the grunts. I got two, so I'm good. Grunt is has gone. So that will clear the grunts. And that will give me an XP. So I'm at, at three now. And that will finish off my turn. So it's over to Gumbjorn to go. So he is going to attack the one that is standing. He gets to avoid or negate one point of, of defense on them, so they're back down to their their bait, their two defense. He does get five dice for that, six for the horn, and one for being in a water space. So we'll see what we can do here. All right, so there's two, three. I do get a one reroll. Uh, four. Uh, they stop two, so two damage, so that guy's up to three damage. All right, and then I'll attack again. This is second action. All 
It's a little better this time. So there's four plus a crit. So I get to roll another die. That's another hit. And then I do get one reroll. And that's another one. So five damage on that one. They have seven. So that is enough to defeat that bear shark. And that gets me two XP. So that puts him up to seven. So he's almost there. All right. Um, that was my second action. Do I go again? I think I'm going to move this time. So I'm going to just simply move over here. All right, so that'll finish off. Oh, I got a free move action, so I might as well use that as well. So let's go over there. Okay, now it's the Brutes. So he's going to stand back up. And that's all he can do. So then on to Eileen to go. So Eileen, Eileen's still got two. So I'm going to go ahead and move one and two. And we find, and we find Chalk. All right, so she is, she is back out on the board. And that is the end of the turn. So then Chalk gets to go right away. So Archer Assault, spawn one Archer in each spawn point. Chalk teleports to the furthest, second furthest away and places the darkness tile on her space. So that's gonna bump Eileen out. This will have a darkness tile on it. And then she's gonna to teleport to the second furthest away, which is going to be this one over here. And then we also have to spawn archers on each one of the spawn points. Okay. And then we have to drop an archer to tile out, which means they're gonna to get to go right away. Well, that's not so good. All right, uh, that is it for that. So the archers go, that one's not going to move. That one will attack Mary. So Mary's going to get her five, I believe, we were up to with her. And Mary is good, so she will not have to worry about suffering poison or anything. And then over to Eileen. That one's going to move up and attack. Archers are in a movement slot, and they do two damage. Eileen's going to get two, three defense. And nothing, so she's gonna take two wounds and she suffers poison. Okay, all right, no, it's very good. Back to the top of the order with Talia. Hmm, Talia. Be great to be able to get into there, but. this point it's probably better to move over and then take a shot on the on the bunny there so that's going to be five attack dice and that is four and she has the re-rolls and that's all she needed so that is going to take care of that one and she'll pick up another xp so she's right on the verge as well with that and that is her turn. So that will finish her off. We're on to Mary and Chalk draws another card. Boil and shake. All heroes in water spaces suffer a wound. Ugh. And heroes that are not are gonna suffer knockdown. So that is everybody on that. So one, two, and three. Okay. That is, then we're on to Mary to go. So Mary's going to go ahead and do her knowledge check again on the bear. I got a crit, so rolling. I'm good. So he's back down and at four wounds now. Um, she's got one action left, so I'll go ahead and do it again. Keep working on him. All right, we're good there. So he suffers two more, and that puts him at six. So one more, and he's, he's gone. All right, that's uh, Mary. Then Chalk is going to draw another card. We have the Crabbling Bomb. Um, so normally this is going to take a clear shot, but there's nobody in line of sight. Okay, so Chalk can move through face down darkness tile. So she is going to go ahead and move in here and target Gunbjorn. And so with that one, that is going to 
moves two spaces to clear shot, hero, lowest initiative, initiative track. That would be Eileen, which is over here. So she cannot see her, so she's simply going to target the hero that she can target then, which is going to be Gumbjorn, as he is the closest. All right, so it's two hits on Gumbjorn. He is going to get two. He is in a water space, so he picks up. Uh, he'll get, that gives him a defense reroll. He does get one for the Urchin Armor, one for his Fortitude, and he's not in a dark uh, in a space that grants him another one, so let's see what he gets. He gets one reroll with this, and he does, does have a crit, so the crit doesn't help him, and the reroll doesn't help him either. Not good. All right, so he is going to take one wound from that, so he is up to three. And he did roll a crit, though, so the Urchin Armor does do a wound to Eileen, so that puts her back down to 26 and gets him another XP at 8. And then, if any wounds, then you spawn two Crablings close to the hero. So I have to drop some Crablings, so I will have to get those tokens. Alright, so the Crablings are out, and they are going to be placed on my space. All right, so that will finish off that. So now it is Gumbjorn's turn. I'm going to attack Chalk. I think that's probably the smart move. So I'm going to get six dice for that. And let's see what happens here. Seven dice because of the flotation device. All right, so there's two, three. A crit gets me... Another die, and there's another crit, so awesome. All right, so we are at five so far, and then I do get an attack reroll for that. And that's it. And that's it. So six hits. Chalk has three defense, so three get through. So that'll do, bring her down to 23. Gives me three more, one, two, three. Puts him up to 11. It's going to give the other guys one XP a piece for, or he's level three, so that's two XP a piece. So Mary and Talia now are both level two, so that's great. Uh, unfortunately, I do have to draw another card now because of that. So let's handle that real quick, and then I still have two actions left with Gunbjorn, so we'll see what, what happens with that here. All right, so then we have Curse Bomb. Chalk moves one space towards clear shot. Oh boy, all right, so this is probably the worst character this could possibly happen to, and, but we'll find out if he gets cursed or not. I do get four, four dice and I get a reroll. I have two hits coming at me, I need to stop two. I stopped two, I got a crit and a hit, so let's go ahead and roll. There's another crit, and then I get one reroll. All right, so two crits will do two more damage to one wound to the closest attacking enemy. So it has to be her, so all right. Two, I was gonna say I could clear out those little crablings, but that's all right. So two more on that, and I don't have to suffer the effects of curse, so that's great news. Okay, um, that was, my first action, I still have two left to go, so I might as well try to hit her again. I might even level up to level four. So I'm gonna get seven dice again, and I'm at 13 right now. And I do get another thing here, so let me see what which one I want here. I have Mystic Weapon, may attack with melee weapons from range, and then I'll use the range results, or Chance of speed. All close heroes gain one free move action, including Bjorn. So that's cool. All right, so I will go ahead and hit Chalk again. See what we can get here. All right, I got a crit. That's a crack. So, nope. All right, and that was a hit. Hit, hit. So first off, the crit. And that's another hit. And then one reroll. Nothing. All right, so two more damage on Chalk. So that's going to drop her down to 19. So we're closing in. Two more XP puts him right on the verge. So that actually worked out in my favor. I have one action remaining. 
Do I hit her again? I might as well. I mean, that's the point of the game, right? All right, let's see what we can do here. Come on, Gumbjorn. All right, there's six hits, and I get the one reroll. Is a crit. Sweet. Another hit. So she's going to stop three, five get through. So that'll pick up five more. That puts him up to 20. That's going to level him up. And that will trigger her thing. So she's going to drop down to 14. So she's under half now. And then he's going to pick up what he wants for level four. And then all of us are going to pick up three XP. So I'll put him up to six, eight, and eight. So they're almost at level threes as well now. So that's great. And then he's going to take, he can either take tackle when moving into a space, roll one die per enemy, melee success causes knockdown, or chance of strength. All close heroes gain plus one attack, including Gumbjorn. Oh yeah, definitely taking the chance of strength. All right, so he's going to get plus one on his attack, or plus one attack die every time he attacks now. All right, so then we have to resolve chalk. Life Siphon. Chalk moves two spaces to get clear shot on the hero with the highest XP. She don't need to move. And she is going to do two damage, so let's see if he can block that. Oh, he does, and he got a crit. He's just pounding away. There's another one. Come on, Gumbjorn. Whoa! Keep it going. All right, and I do get a reroll. All right, so three more damage. So here she thought she was going to steal life, and instead... She loses it. One, two, three. So she's down 11 hit points. Gumbjorn picks up three more. Puts him at 23. Oof. All right, Gumbjorn. Okay, so that is the end of his turn. Now she deals another card, which is Archer Assault. Spawn one archer in each spawn point. I will have to grab some more archers. I am all out of archers. All right, so I got one here. And I need one here. And these guys are primed. I, my intention is to start painting, but I have not done so yet. So that is why they, I have a couple of white enemies out there. They're not ghosts. Okay, uh, that is all of that. And then she does jump around here. So she teleports to the second furthest away spawn point. And she leaves the darkness tile, which there's already one there. So her the second furthest away is one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So she's going to pop over here, and that will finish that off. Okay, that is the end of his turn. So over to the Brutes. He's going to stand back up. That will finish his turn. Over to Eileen to go. She has to stand up as her first action. Her second action, she might as well attack. Uh, she still needs a couple more points before she's going to go to level 3. Or I could... No, I don't want to necessarily move up and, and handle that. So I'm going to go ahead and use the sa Sacrificial Dagger, because if I crit, I heal a wound. So I'm going to get 4 dice for that, plus 1 for my Mighty Gloves, and 1 for the space I'm in. So I'm going to get 6. And I got 2 crits, 2 hits. And when you defeat an enemy with a crit, heal a wound... Uh, I get two more crits token. Okay, so six. So yeah, that'll definitely take down that archer, and that will heal one for me. And that gives me an XP. I have one action remaining. Hmm. I could jump into here to avoid... Now the archers have a movement, so... I think I'm just going to stay there as my last action. Okay. Uh, so I have to handle poison. So defense, I get three. And I don't take the damage, but I am still poisoned. Okay. Uh, chalk is vanished. So chalk again is going to vanish away. So let's go ahead and remove these and basically just redo this. Since I haven't revealed any of those, I'll just keep those and shuffle this back up. Wait a minute. That one. That one. And that one. So this one should be here. So this one's going to pump him over. 
That one gets discarded. And that will be that. Alright, All right, so one there. One here. One up there. And one there. And Chalk is gone. So she, she decided to sulk away and try to heal her wounds that she has taken. Okay. So that'll give us a little bit of time to maybe clear up some of these enemies here. We'll see what happens. All right, so Archer's next, so this guy's going to move up and shoot me. So I get three dice again. And I block everything. And I don't have any crit things that are going to help with that. So that one has all that guy gets to do. They're behind a darkness base. They get to move to... And this one's going to shoot. They are going to target Talia. She is the highest on the track. So Talia is going to get two... Uh, she has got one for that, and then she gets one for being in Mary Fix's space. And, oh, she got two crits as well, so she's good. I don't have to even bother rolling anything else. So top of the order, right away, Chalk heals one, so she's back up to 12. And it is over to Talia to go. So Talia, she's got some enemies to take down, so might as well... Might as well focus on that rabbit first off. So I'm going to get five dice for that. We'll see what we get here. All right, so there's one, two, three for the crits. One more, and then she has three rerolls. Picks up one more. So that's four damage, and that will take care of that guy. She picks up level three. So let's see what she can choose from here. So she can have Piercing Gaze. Nope, not going to do any good. Calculated Step lets her dodge without... Ha or uh, she doesn't have to do dodge attempts when she wants to move. So I'm going to take advantage of that right away so I don't have to dodge away from that guy there. And I'm going to go ahead and take a shot on that one as my last action. All right, I got a crit. And another crit. So there's three... Four and the crits. Wow. All right. So that will get her another XP as that bunny goes down as well. And that will finish off her turn. All right. Um, on to Mary to go. So Mary is going to go ahead and drop, try to drop this guy with her tome. So she, yep, she definitely does that. Two damage to him. We'll eliminate him and then she gets two XP. So that will bump her up to level three. Let's see what she wants here. She can take magic surge plus one attack with magic spell attacks. And that is not a magic. It's a special ranged. Or she can take stone hide, which I'll do, plus one defense. All right. Uh, that was her first action. Her second action, I will go ahead and move. One, two. All right. So we have an event. And we have the Void Scroll. You stumble upon a strange scroll that feels uh, otherworldly. It's a one-shot. Spend one action. Instantly defeat all enemies in one space. Do not gain experience. Uh, does not affect the Megalopotamus or bosses. Discard after use. Okay, so we will hold on to that. That sounds really, really good. Depending upon when we potentially could use that. I don't think I'm going to use it yet because uh, these guys are, are not much to worry about. I have one action left, right? I attacked, yep, and then I moved. So I'm going to go ahead and move back for my last action. Okay. Um, on to Gunbjorn. He has a free move action. And I forgot to add, handle the Crablings. Let me handle those real quick. So each one attacks for one, and they are in a defensive slot. So he's going to get his... Let's see. He got Fortitude... And that. So he's got four, and he gets a reroll. All right, so we stopped one with a crit. And I do get one reroll. And there's another crit. So I've stopped both damage, and both of the crablings have been defeated because of my urchin's armor. So that'll clear that off. Okay, now it's my turn. All right. Um... Don't have much of a choice, I guess. I gotta jump into the darkness to find out what's in there. So we have an event, so let's see what we get here. We have Eyes in the Dark. Oh no! The darkness uncovers a room full of enemies. 
<laughs> draw one spawn card and spawn enemies from your current experience tier in your space. So I'm tier tier four uh, in your space. Okay. So tier four is going to get us four grunts into that space. And that'll push push me back one. Or I could go forward one. I think I'll do that. I'll go forward. Well, I get the extra die. But the archers are going to be going. No, that's brutes. So brutes are gone. And then the grunts are going to come out. So they're going to go there. So archers would be the next one to go. So yeah, I'm going to go into the archer space. Okay. That takes care of that. And that was my first move action, which I got a free move action because of that. And then I also get a free move action because of his ability as well. And now I get a additional... Uh, all close heroes gain plus one attack, including Gumbjorn. So he gets an extra attack die because of that. Um, well, now's the time to level up. If, if, if any time is, now would be the time. Um, so I need to kill two enemies. So let's go ahead and start off with that. So I get five dice for the attack, plus one for the horn, plus one for my ability. All right, so that is that is a dead bunny. I don't even need to worry about the criticals. That puts me up to 24. One more kill, and I am at level 5. All right, so let's see what happens here. So there's three, and I get a reroll. That's crits, and nothing. Do I have anything else here? Um, plus one HP. Defense, so that's four. Bunnies do... Oh, that's enough. Bunnies only have one defense and three health, so that will defeat the bunny. That puts me into level five. That bumps everybody up two by four. One, two, three, four. So now Eileen is in level three, so she is going to take uh, Weapons Expert or Cornered. So I'll take Cornered, because Weapons Expert isn't going to necessarily do me any good. Uh, that's going to put her up to 14 and 14. Okay, so pretty good. All right, uh, that is all of the archers. Nope, 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 no, not. They're still out there. So they're still on. Uh, that is it for Gumbjorn. There's not much else I can do at this point. So Eileen is going to be next. All I have is rain, or melee. So let's go ahead and move. One, two... And she's in a defensive slot. Actually, let's go back. One, two. I'm going to jump in here first off, just in case. No, it's treasure. I'll take treasure. Treasure's good. And we get the shadow belt. So automatically succeed on all dodge rolls. Okay. So that was my first. So second. And archers are next. They're in an attack slot, so... I'm just going to go ahead and move up one. Okay, then the poison. So I get three dice for that. And I stop it again, but no, I have not eliminated the poison yet. Okay. So archers are next. They're going to move up by one. Oh, actually, no, that's behind. he's behind a wall. So they're not going to move that way. All right, uh, that is it for the archers. On to grunts. The grunts are all going to attack on Bjorn. He is going to get two defense, plus one for the armor, plus one for the fortitude. He is not in a defensive slot. And then I have speed and strength. And then he has battle shout. All heroes starting close to Gumbjorn gain plus one free action, including Gumbjorn. Oof, nasty. All right, uh, that's four, so he's got to stop four damage. We'll see what happens here. Ooh, stopped one, and I get a reroll. And stopped two, so I take two damage, so he is up to five. I still have one, two extra HP from, from that. Okay. Um, that is going to finish off the Grunt's turn. Back up to Talia to go. And now Chaka is going to regain an HP, so... 
at 13. So either there or there. Okay, Talia. Talia's going to go ahead and take some shots. She needs to try to clear out some of those otters. So she gets five dice. And she took the calculated step, so. All right. Uh, there's a crit and two hits, so the crit. And then she does get three re-rolls. And there's two more with a crit, so... Okay, so she does five, and she has pierce. So grunts are movement, and grunts have two HP, uh, two defense. So she stop, she gets through one, so one defense will clear one out and four damage on the grunt. Okay, I'll go ahead and shoot again. So five dice. All right, there's a crit. And another crit. And then three rerolls. All right, so there's five more. So that will take that guy down. And that'll bump her up to 15. So one more, and she will get her next ability. Come on, Talia. All right, so there's two. That's the crit, so there's another one. All right, and then three rerolls. There we go. So two more crits and a hit as well. And another one. So one gets pulled away and six get through, which will drop that guy and level her up. All right, so she is going to get a level four now. So it's either quick reload, which gives her plus two rerolls on ranged attacks or toxic skin. Close enemy wounds tell you they, gain a, they take a wound. I'm going to go ahead and take the quick reload to give her a whopping five reloads on her shots now. Uh, that will finish off her turn. On to Mary Fixit. Mary's going to go ahead and move. She'll go one. Let's see. One there. And I'll go ahead and do my knowledge checks to start knocking them over. There's one. That's successful, so it's two and a knockover. And might as well go again. I get one reroll, and it's good. So another two and knock over. Okay, that will finish off her turn. On to Gumbjorn. Now he gets four actions because of his ability. So that's really nice. Uh, he's at max at this point, so I'm going to go ahead and move. One, two as my free move action because of that, and then I get another free move action because of my space, and that is where Chaka is, so or Chuck. So she's gonna come back out, and I'm gonna go ahead and try to wallop her. So I'm st I still have four actions remaining. I get five dice because of the blade. I get one from his ability. I get one from the horn and I'm not in a water space or that. So seven, seven attack dice. And there's three, four, and I get one reroll. And I got two crits, so two more dice. So five, three get taken away. So two more damage on chalk. And I am at max level, so there's no fear of me leveling up to have her draw an extra card. So I'm just going to go ahead and swing again. And two more crits with two hits. So two more and a reroll. Another crit. Another crit. Oh, here we go. Come on. All right, nothing there. Okay, so that is eight hits. Three get pulled away, so five more damage on her brings her down to six hit points. Uh, then I have, that's my second. Let's go again. Gumbjorn's just pounding on her now. All right, so there's one, one crit. And nope, on the crit, and then I got one reroll. And one. Okay. I was bound to have one of those. And she's got five hit points left. I do have one action left thanks to my battle uh, shout. 
So this could be it. Could finish her off here. There's two, two crits. There's another one. And then a reroll. There's another crit. So she's got three on her and another one. So she's got four more on her. She's down to one hit point. Come Bjorn almost took her down. <laughs> oh man. All right, let's see what she has to say about that. So she does the crabbling bomb. So she's gonna target the hero lowest on the track, which would be Eileen. She cannot get into the line of sight of Eileen, so then she's going to target the hero. Let's see. She cannot attack that target. She's going to attack the closest hero instead, so which is Gumbjorn, which he might end up taking her down <laughs> because of this. Let's see here. So he's gonna get his four dice. He gets one for four to two, and he gets two for his armor and one for the art, uh, urchin armor. So if he gets one critical on this, she is gone. Oh, he didn't. So one, and then uh, he does get a reroll. So let's see here. Might have some more crablings coming out here. Nope, nope, nope. That rolled off the board. Nope. All right, so he's going to take a wound. So that puts him up to six. So he is almost down. Because he has seven HP up. Okay, seven. And then if the hero takes any wounds, you're going to spawn two crablings close to that hero. All right, so that'll be that. And then the crablings are here. So go ahead and drop those two into there. Okay. All right, so she's got one hit point left. That is it for Gumbjorn. So we're over to Eileen. Can Eileen get there? That is the question. She has three actions to do so. She could go to, she wouldn't be able to attack. So I might as well just move over and take a couple shots on to those guys there. I'm gonna go ahead and use my sacrificial dagger. No, I'm gonna go with the nunchucks. That gives me two rerolls. So that's gonna give me my four, five dice. And we'll see what we get here. All right, so there's two, and I get two rerolls. And that's four. That will eliminate them without a crit, so I'll, uh, I took the nunchucks anyways. All right, so that gives me one. And let's try again on the other bunny. There's three. There's a crit. And two rerolls. Another crit. That'll do it for the bunnies. The bunnies have been eliminated. They're all gone, so that will drop them down. Crabs are going to drop over. Eileen picks up another H XP. And that will finish off her turn. Right? I moved. Two attacks. Yep. All right. And then I do have my defensive roll for the poison. And I do not stop the poison this time. So Eileen takes another wound. Okay. That is the end of Eileen's turn. On to Grunts. The Grunts are both going to stand back up. But they won't be able to attack at this point. And then the Crablings are going to go. They're going to attack Gunbjorn. He gets four dice. And we'll see what happens here. And he stops both. And a crit. So another die. And he gets to reroll one of them. And he stops everything and destroys one of the crablings in the process. All right. Uh, that is it for the crablings. So back to the top of the order with Talia. She's going to go ahead and shoot onto the grunts. So five dice. She got three hits. She has five rerolls. So here's two, four. Nope, that one's cracked. There's a crit. So the crits, and then one more. All right, so, oof, that's rough. All right, uh, they have one defense. So three get through. That will be enough to take out the first one. So she picks up another one there. And next action, there's four and one, two three, four, okay, and four damage on that guy. So he's gone. She picks up another one there, 
and then she has one action remaining. So might as well just stay there at this point. All right, so her turn's done, and Chalk is going to spawn two grunts close to Chalk. So they'll be able to spawn right into there. Then Chalk is going to teleport to the second furthest away. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven's the furthest away, so... She's going to pop over here, and then the darkness tile will be placed onto that space there. We have, so that'll bump him out, and that'll go there. Okay, so that will take care of that, and that is it for that. So Mary fix its turn, and she's right there. <laughs> So she's going to move two, and then she'll use her tome. This will be it, This, unless she screws this up completely. And she got a success. So that is two damage onto Chalk, and that is it. Well, that is it. That was very successful. Our heroes did very well in that, and things just worked out in our favor. Gumbjorn was able to really hone in on Chalk and tear her apart. He is absolutely brutal with those attacks. So I hope you found the video interesting. Let me know in the comments down below if you noticed if I got anything wrong. I love hearing from you, and I do my best to, do, to get everything correct, but every once in a while I do make mistakes. So let me know in the comments down below, and if you want to see anything else around this. Also, let me know if you're excited about the new Kickstarter. I am really excited. I cannot wait to see all the cool new stuff that they're going to release with this. So let me know if you're excited about it and what your hopes are with that. If there's anything that's on your list that you would love to see in that new uh, standalone expansion. So as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave feedback on them. I do really appreciate and take into account everything you say to make the best possible videos. And until next time, I'll see you later.